So the key empirical idea in this paper is that settler mortality is going to be an instrument for institutions in a regression of growth on institutions. Okay, so in there, going back to this example, the Y is going to be growth or income, okay, or we can call it or income. X is going to be institutions. And Z, the instrument, is going to be settler mortality. OK? So um, that's the key empirical idea of this paper. So what are the requirements for this to be true? What are the things we have to check? The things we have to check are, number one, there's a first stage, right? So the first stage says that settler mortality affects institutions, okay? And this we can check in the data, right? So here it is, right? This graph shows settler mortality on the x-axis. It shows average expropriation risk, or one minus expropriation risk, or average expropriation risk where 10 is having very low risk of expropriation, so very good institutions. And you know, like a low number, like a four or whatever, is having bad institutions, like having high risk of expropriation. What you can see is a negative slope, OK? So places where settlers were more likely to die when they show up and sort of settled the colonies, those places have very high expropriation risk. OK, so that's the, uh, so there's a downward slope. That's the first stage. That we can check in the data, OK? The second thing we have to check is the exclusion restriction. What's the exclusion restriction? The exclusion restriction, remember, is that Z, which is in our case settler mortality, doesn't affect epsilon. It only affects per capita income through the affected institutions. OK, so is this a good, is this, so, the, so an important question as you try to think through this paper comes down to whether you think this is a good, a good instrument or a bad instrument, whether you think settler mortality might only affect uh, growth or income through its effect on institutions or might have other direct effects. Okay, and remember, right, this is an assumption. We can't check it directly. We just have to think about it and decide whether it's believable or not. Okay, so what are some of the kinds of things we should be thinking about when we think of this, right? We need to think about what are potential channels? Now we actually, we can't just, we have to stop thinking about these as like Z's and X's and Y's. We have to really understand what settler mortality means, what institutions mean, what economic growth means. We have to actually think about these as real things, okay? So what does it really mean? Settler mortality actually means that when, you know, when the settlers came from the colonial, from the, from the colonizers to these new colonies, you know, were they likely to make it? Were they likely to sort of make it through, you know, or, or were they likely to, to get killed? That's, that's the idea. And if you think about that, you have to think about, well, what were the, what were the factors that led them to survive or, or not survive? So on the one hand, you might say, well, the disease environment, right, might be something that would be really important. Okay, if you come and there's malaria and yellow fever and all these tropical diseases, those settlers were probably more likely to, 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 to die, right? Um, so an important question is, well, maybe that disease environment that was there 300, 400 years ago, right, maybe that might still persist and maybe it might affect income. But of course, the story that Asim Mugu Johnson and Robinson want to tell is that, you know, settler mortality affects institutions because if the settlers, if the settlers came and they, were, they, they couldn't really survive there, they didn't want to bring their families and create a whole kind of like, you know, new England or New Amsterdam or whatever, in those places, they, they wanted to sort of go in there just with the minimal number of colonizers possible and extract as much as they can. So that, that's their story for why institutions would be different, because if I don't want to settle there myself, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create extractive institutions, and if I want to settle there myself, I'm going to want to create institutions that are good for me. That's their story. But it could be that in places where, the set, where you know, that were bad for settlers, you know, maybe, they're, maybe they're sort of bad uh, for other people today. Okay, so that's kind of the key question about the exclusion, that's at least one key question about the exclusion restriction 
that you need to think about. Okay, so that's one. Now, of course, they're not, you know, they're not stupid. They thought about this, right? So they're going to think about, um, uh, you know, things like temperature, uh, latitude, other characteristics. And they'll try to say that, look, you know, even if we control for those characteristics, these effects still go through. But at the end of the day, when you evaluate this paper, what you need to be thinking about is, you know, are there differences in, in you know, are there other channels, like I gave the example of disease or whatever, through which settler mortality might affect growth that have that could be might affect today's income, other than through its effect on in institutions. Okay, that's the key assumption of the paper. Okay. So that's one example. Uh, one thing to think about it. So the example I gave is, is you know, uh, disease burden. Now there are other examples. Okay, that could be that could be um, uh, could be related. So, you know, what are some other examples? You know, one other one, for example, could be latitude, right? It could be that, you know, places that are, uh, or distance from Europe. It could be that places that are far away from Europe, um, you know, maybe they had problems getting supplies from Europe and settlers were more likely to die in those places. Maybe that was actually bad for current, economic, current, current income, right? Because trade, you know, what mattered for trade then actually could matter for trade now. That's another example. So the, the, in this paper, in some sense, the instrument is not totally clear. But the reason this paper is so, so compelling is that it's really hard to find something that, 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 that affects institutions. And so even if this instrument isn't perfect, I think the whole idea that you could find an instrument for institutions is, is what made this paper so, so exciting. Um, but these are some of the challenges that we need to think about, right? So, health, so I, I gave the example of health, um, latitude. One thing we, that another one you might think thought of is particular colonizers. Maybe some colonizers were better or worse at you know, keeping their, their people in their colonies healthy. Um, maybe they sent different people from the mother country to, to the colony, and maybe those, that, those differences could have affected mortality, and those could also be correlated with current outcomes. So these are the kinds of possible violations of the exclusion restriction that you need to think about. And then the question is whether or not they can sufficiently control for these things so that, you know, once they, once they control for those things, whether the exclusion restriction is still going to hold. Okay, so that's the, that's the key idea, this, the key question in this paper. Okay. So now, with that in mind, we can actually look at the results of the paper. And what you can see in the results is that they're going to exactly mirror, the way they're going to set it up is going to actually mirror sort of the, the simple setup I, I gave before. Okay, so they're going to start by showing you the first stage. Okay, so the first stage says that, uh, you know, um, the first stage is the one I showed you before, that downward slope, that law, you know, higher settler mortality leads to lower protection against expropriation risk, right? That's the effect of Z on X, okay? So that's, that's there. It's strongly negative, right? That's what we saw in the graph. And then they're going to just show you the direct effect, the, 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 the two stages, they're going to call it two stages least squares, but you can think of this as the... Um, as like the uh, the instrumental variables effect, um, that's going to be the effect of expropriation risk uh, on log GDP per capita. Um, like so, for example, that's going to be 0.94. So how do we know it's statistically, it's statistically significant? We know it's statistically significant because we can divide 0.94 by 0.16 to get a, a T ratio. And as we talked about earlier, if the T ratio is greater than about two. If the ratio between the coefficient and the standard error is greater than about two, we know this is statistically significant. So this has got a, you know, got a T ratio of something like five, so this is definitely statistically significant. Okay, so there's a strong statistically significant effect. Second question is, are these magnitudes big or small? Okay, and how do we figure that out? What does it mean for this to be 0.94? Okay. What that means is going from like say five to six on that expropriation scale is associated with income per capita. So five per six on that scale, sorry, where, where six is less, is better institutions. Going from five to six on that scale means your income per capita, is, your log income per capita is 0.94 higher. Okay, that's a really big effect. Okay, remember this is the natural log. Okay, so an effect of one is like going up by e to the one or 2.7 times.
Okay? So, you know, if this was coefficient of 1, that would be like 2.7 times, coefficient of 0.94, so it's around, say, I don't know, 2.5 times. Okay? So that means that if I go from 5 to 6 on that scale, your per capita income is 2.5 times higher. Right? And it's a log scale, so it keeps being multiplicative. If I went from 5 to 7 on that scale, it would be uh, like 2.5 squared times higher. Okay, so it would be like, you know, I don't know, six or eight, six or seven times higher. Okay, so these effects are, are enormous, right? So that, that says that, you know, two points on this scale is something like, you know, increasing your GDP per capita by a factor of six. Okay, so these are really big effects. So, so these effects are really, really large in magnitude. The third thing that they do in this table is they try to address all of the different concerns we had about exclusion restriction by either adding control variables or looking at different subsamples. So for example, um, the first thing they do in this is they might, they say, well, you know, at lat we said, you know, one of, the, one of the possible concerns I raised was latitude. So they're gonna control for latitude and say, once I add the latitude as a control, this effect doesn't really change. They're gonna control for uh, different continents, the effect doesn't really change. They're going to say maybe this is all driven by sub-Saharan Africa is really, is, has a really bad disease environment and you know, sub, it's sub-Saharan Africa versus everything else. So they're going to say, no, no, we'll just drop Africa entirely. Um, the effects fall a little bit, but it's still very strong and positively significant. So it's not just driven by Africa versus everything else. Um, so they can add some controls. They can, they can do different samples. In the next table, they can add you know, additional controls. They can add uh, dummies for what your sort of colonial origin were. Uh, they can just look only within British colonies. Um, and they can add other sets of controls as well, which are, which are listed in the table notes. Okay? So um, they can add, here they can add a whole set of temperature variables, a whole set of humidity variables. Uh, they could look at sort of the fraction of people that are, are of European descent kind of in a more recent period. The, the basic strategy they're going to say is, you know, we think settler mortality is reasonable, but essentially if there's any story you can come up with for why it might not be really good, or really, really valid, we're going to either add additional controls or sort of use, use subsample analysis to show that in fact actually the results kind of go through regardless. Okay, so the the... So just to, uh, to sum up, what's the bottom line of this paper? What's the key idea? The, the bottom line of this paper is there's a, an important question about whether or not um, good institutions, having good sort of protection of property rights and, and things of that nature, whether, that's, whether that actually has a causal effect on leading countries to be richer or poorer. The fundamental challenge with answering that question is, of course, the causality could go either way. Right? It could be that as a rich country, one thing we buy is good quality institutions. Right? We hire good judges, we hire good lawyers, we set up, you know, we, we, we invest a lot in our legal system. Um, or it could be the other way around, that actually having those good legal institutions and other institutions could actually lead to economic growth. So because that causality could go either way, we need to have an instrument that sort of says, no, 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 we're going to have one way of, of getting this channel of causality. And their idea was to look within the colonial legacy, looking at heterogeneity across colonies, and exploiting that to say something about whether, in fact, the better institutions do uh, lead, to, um, lead to better economic growth, and, and they find evidence that it, that it does. Okay, so that's the point of this paper. 